I'm Cedar, and I work as a software engineer with the Privacy and Scaling Explorations team. So, I'm going to talk about anonymous signaling on Ethereum, and I would like to start with an important question. Why anonymity is important? I don't know why people are so keen to put the details of their private life in public. They forget that invisibility is a superpower. We cannot be sure if this quote is from Banksy, but even if it was anonymous, the message is still very important. Invisibility or anonymity is a superpower because it decouples an idea from the identity of its author, because it allows flowers to be thrown without the identity of the thrower being known. So, although ideas are intrinsically connected to the author, sometimes the message is more important than the messenger. And sometimes preserving the identity of the messenger is even more important. So anonymity can therefore become an important tool because it limits power. Those with a lot of power derive much of that power from knowledge, from information. The more someone knows about us, the more power they can have over us. Keeping our data or our identity private decentralizes that power. Anonymity promotes freedom of speech. The first step in censoring an idea is to attack its author. And the fear of suffering repercussions for what we say or write also limits our thinking. So knowing that our data and identity are safe encourages us to think freely. Anonymity safeguards reputation. It is important that people are held accountable for their actions and especially for their mistakes, particularly when these people have a lot of responsibility when they have an important role. But it is also important that our ideas are not judged based on who we are, but rather on what we have to say. Anonymity allows an idea to be shared regardless of its author's reputation, which allows people to consider and evaluate ideas from a more objective perspective. Most of us are aware of the importance of anonymity and privacy, but what about our challenges? What are the main drawbacks right now, and how can we solve them? There are probably many reasons, but two of them deserve particular attention. The first one is complexity of technology. In recent years, we have seen a constant growth in the development and use of cryptographic technology. Zero knowledge proofs, for example, are now being used in many applications. Proving you have a certain information without revealing the information itself is a really powerful concept. But the way these technologies work is not trivial for people without a background in mathematics or cryptography. In addition, the availability of simple and practical development tools is still limited. Well, a lot of progress has been made, actually, but I believe one more step is needed in order to further abstract some technical concepts. So the second drawback is the indifference of people. One of the reasons why some people don't care enough about privacy and anonymity might be that there is not enough awareness and education about how our data is used and why anonymity is important in a healthy society. So what can we do then? There are many solutions, but I would like to focus on three solutions. The first one is privacy by default. The right to privacy is mentioned in most national constitutions but it has often been neglected in the name of national security issues or to make the applications we use every day smarter and more efficient. Privacy and cryptography should be the backbone of the internet infrastructure. Protocols and applications should, be, should protect all user data by default. And in addition, users should be free to change those settings, not the opposite. Another point is education. Explaining to people why privacy is important and how we can build privacy-focused applications are very valuable challenges. It is important to choose the right words, build effective designs, and convey information as simply as possible. However, simplify things is not enough. Making people aware of the technological and social complexity of the world we live in is equally important. Because we don't just want users to enjoy an experience, we want new friends helping us build a new web free. So the third point 
is the developer experience. The growth of our community and the adoption of our technology depend heavily on how clear the goals are and how easily the main values and concepts can be conveyed. However, another extremely important aspect is the quality of the code. The code should be tested, documented, formatted with the utmost care. It is extremely important to use the right patterns and to follow the best practices, like dry and kiss. So, Developers need to be able to rely on robust, easy-to-use tools that allow applications to be built in a short time, while also allowing them to be extended, customized, and adapted for specific uses. So, developer experience and education is what we have focused on in the last few months of work with Semaphore. But many of you may be wondering what Semaphore is. Semaphore is a zero-knowledge protocol that allows people to uh, join a group and then to send signals, such as messages, endorsements, or votes, without revealing the original identity. In addition, it also provides a mechanism to prevent double signaling, which basically means you cannot create the same proof twice, or the proof cannot be verified twice. So what makes Semaphore a powerful tool is the simplicity of the protocol and the flexibility. It can be used to build many applications, like private voting applications, whistleblower applications, or Xenology DAOs. Semaphore is made of three uh, different parts, Circum circuits, Solidity contracts, and JavaScript libraries. My work has focused more um, Java on JavaScript libraries and Solidity contracts. So I would like to show you the main Semaphore concepts and how our libraries and contracts work and how they can be used to build private applications. So creating a Semaphore identity is the first step to interact with the protocol. Each identity is made up of two secret values, trapdoor and nullifier, and one public value, commitment. So the positive hash of the identity nullifier and trapdoor is called the identity secret, and the hash of the identity secret is the identity commitment. So although in this case we are not using asymmetric encryption, um, an identity commitment can be considered something like an Ethereum address. It is a public value used to represent people in the protocol. And in particular, commitments are used in semaphore groups to represent the identity of a group member. The secret values are like Ethereum private keys, and they are used to generate semaphore zero-knowledge proofs and authenticate signals. Semaphore identities can be generated off-chain with our JavaScript library, and quite simple, and you can generate it in two ways, randomly or deterministically. You can generate a random identity without passing any parameters and a deterministic identity passing a secret message, like a password or a signed message. Groups are an important concept when we speak about privacy and zero-knowledge technologies. They can be thought as um, anonymity sets and they are a way to establish ne necessary trust among participants. In Semaphore, a group can be uh, people who have an account on some web tube platforms uh, with high reputation, employees of a specific company, uh, voters in an election, or people with specific SBTs or NFTs. Essentially, any set of indiv individuals who are eligible to participate, participate in something. So, groups can, can use several types of data structures, but Merkle trees are particularly efficient in, since they can prove that a leaf belongs to a tree by using just one portion of that tree. So Semaphore uses binary Merkle trees, in which the leaves are the identity commitments, and all the other nodes in the tree are the ashes of their child nodes. When a user joins a group, uh, their public identity is added to that group's Merkle tree, which is therefore used to allow users to generate proof of membership and then send anonymous signals. So groups can be created off-chain with our JavaScript library or on-chain with our, with our Semaphore contracts. When a group is very large and is updated very frequently, an off-chain group might be a valuable alternative or solution. This solution is cheaper, faster, but tended to be more centralized. On the other hand, if you need correct execution or censorship resistance, groups can also be created on-chain. Uh, for each on-chain group, there is an admin, um, which can be an Ethereum address, um, a smart contract, or a multi-sig wallet. For example, if you want to create a fully decentralized on-chain group, you could create a group, um, a group and send your contract as admin or your Ethereum address, which, can, which could be used uh, to allow people to join that group only if they own specific 
NFTs or SBTs. So after creating the identity and joining a group, users can anonymously prove that they are members of that group and send signals, such as votes, endorsements, or any message. Signals are part of a zero knowledge proof which um, must be generated by users, preferably in their own device, as they need to use their private identity, so secret values. And um, it's something like client-side encryption uh, in this case, and it allows proofs to be generated in a protected environment locally. So that proof can then be uh, made public and verified by everyone, on-chain or off-chain. To generate a valid proof, we also need an external nullifier, and the hash of this value and the, the identity nullifier is the nullifier hash, which can be used to avoid double signaling. So imagine you have a group you are using to vote on some proposals, and you want all members of that group to vote only once. You can use the ID of the group uh, as an external nullifier, and when a user votes the first time, you can save the hash of their identity nullifier and group ID, and afterwards, block any double votes by checking if that hash already exists. Also in this case, we have a JavaScript library, which can be used to generate proofs. Proofs must be generated off-chain. And um, those proofs can be verified on-chain or off-chain. Off-chain with our JavaScript library, the same library, and on-chain with our smart contract. Also in this case, the way you use them depends on your application, on your use case. So verifying an off-chain proof allows the verifier, your server, or you, to be certain of the validity of the proof, so it's more centralized, and verifying it on-chain, on the other end, allows everyone to consider that proof valid, because the, the smart contract is public. So, Semaphore is already being used uh, by some projects, like Unirep. Unirep is a protocol or a reputation system built on top of Semaphore, where users can anonymously give, receive, and prove reputation. It is a great way to allow people to build reputation over time, while giving them total control over how much they reveal about themselves in a given interaction. So another interesting project is the Kitter, which is an anonymous social network where people can post and chat uh, without losing their real life reputation. And um, the temporary anonymous zone is like an experiment um, we have a booth uh, on the first floor. You can try our applications. And there, is like, there are like uh, two applications you can use where you can um, answer questions and ask questions anonymously with one application and make art anonymously with the other application, collective art. It's like an experiment to allow people to learn more about our technologies and about Semaphore. So Semaphore is still in its early stage. Um, and some of the ideas for improving it are the following. Create an infrastructure to manage groups. The idea is to have um, a cloud or self-hosted dashboard where people can create groups, add members, remove members, or update members. And uh, they, they can create many kinds of groups, like permissioned groups or permissionless decentralized groups, and also reputation groups, similar to Rep. So another point is uh, create attestation contracts for decentralized groups. The idea here is quite simple. Uh, the idea is to create uh, on-chain contracts, smart contracts, where people can join uh, groups directly without any external approval based on on-chain attributes like SBTs or NFTs or just the amount of money you have. We will investigate other zero-knowledge technologies and proofing systems, of course, and we will continue improving the developer experience and our documentation website. The idea is to create like an educational website. And last but not least, we want to create a strong community. We have many ideas here. One of them is our grants round. So we are launching a semaphore grant round. Um, you can scan the QR code on the left. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in building privacy preserving applications with semaphore, um, you can scan that QR code. Uh, we, will we will be really excited to know more about your ideas and projects. Whereas if you want more information about Semaphore or if you have any questions, please visit our website where you can also find uh, our disc the link of our Discord server or come, come to our TADS booth on the first floor. So I hope my talk has been helpful and I really want to thank you all for listening.
Thank you. We have eight minutes for any question that you have for Sidur. No, no questions? Okay. <laughs> so you can go to those QR and continue the conversation on the website and the grants.